you guys might have already picked up, but I really like birds. I just think they're neat. So it was not a hard decision when League of Geeks asked me to do a cosplay from their upcoming game, Solium Infernum. They have this fantastic range of different demon character designs and all of their characters just look absolutely epic in all these different unique ways. But since I got to choose who I was going to portray, it was always going to be my girl Lilith here. She's a tall demon harpy queen. What more could I possibly ask for? She's tall and powerful and regal. She's got those glowing yellow eyes full of contempt and those beautiful shaggy feathers that give the whole thing a wild savage feeling. That beautiful ancient crown and those dangerous looking talons and claws. She just looks like she wants to stomp you under her foot from scorn. Anyway, this whole tangent to say I am making a tall demon harpy queen Lilith with some moving wings going on and you my friends are joining me for the journey. Firstly, a massive thank you of course to League of Geeks. Uh, they have sponsored this whole project. They are an indie game developer based right here in Melbourne and I'm a huge indie game fan anyway so it feels extra special to be supporting a local team. Okay, so I want to maintain the stylistic feeling of Lilith's design but make it wearable for a human with proportions less like an exaggerated hourglass and more like a slightly tall hobbit. So to break this down a little bit, uh, we've basically got the bodysuit itself with some massive hip and shoulder pads to create that exaggerated silhouette. We've got all of the scales themselves and the claws. We've got all of the feathers and there's a lot of those. We've got some wings. We've got the headpiece with that fantastic crown and then we have the whole thing to paint up as well. Now just before we get stuck in I do just want to note that I was actually quite unwell during the filming for a lot of this project and I was also moving house and preparing for a massive overseas trip which are my main excuses for why a lot of the footage is a little bit rough around the edges and in the middle and the whole thing's a little bit rough. So this is how it's going to work. We're not going to treat this like a super polished tutorial. We're going to go into it pretending it's like a uh, found footage artsy gritty mystery film. Is the exposure too high and the footage is all out of focus? Artistic choice to make the details open to interpretation. Is my arm in front of the camera for 60% of the shot? It's adding to the gritty realism making the shot feel authentic and organic. All the actions happening literally all over on the left side of the screen. It's uh, it's a framing device. Alright, I've rambled enough. Let's get into it. Alright, so we did pretty well. This is a grey nylon lycra. It is four-way stretch, so it is perfect for bodysuits because it should sort of like hug against the figure the whole time. Stretch fabrics are a pain in the butt to sew, so that's going to be fun. But it is a nylon lycra, which means that it is similar to a lot of the materials that you'll find like dance wear and uh, active wear made out of anyway. So I'm hoping that means it's going to be pretty good to keep me cool. Anyway, we will see how it goes with sewing it. Now when it comes to sewing with stretchy fabric, my whole technique is basically just fuck around and find out. So for this bodice part, I'm basically just tracing roughly the shape of a swimsuit onto my fabric, which I've doubled over. I'm going to cut this out and sew down both of those little curved sides you can see now. And a few times I basically tried this on, uh, sewed it in where it needed, uh, and then kept going until I had a shape that I was kind of happy with. Now I don't have the patience for patterns but I do have this old pair of leggings that I don't wear because the texture is just absolutely awful. So I basically cut these open at the seams and lay them flat and use it as my pattern tracing it onto my fabric here to cut out and then basically I want to sew these up the crotch from the crotch going upwards towards the belly. According to Google this blue stitch here is called a triple straight stitch and it's strip triple straight stitch and it is great for stretch fabric so that's what we're going to use today. Remember guys to put the right side of your fabric together so that when you sew and then flip it the side that you want is the side that is showing on the outside. I also probably should have used pins or wonder clips to hold my fabric together for this one but we're winging it and it turned out all right so I have no regrets. With those crotch seams up I'm just gonna fold this pair of pants out and now you can instantly see where I'm gonna need to sew from the crotch uh, from the crotch down the leg to join these ones up. I'm gonna be especially careful around this area where all four of these stitch lines meet because you really don't want that scrunching up around your sensitive areas. I tried the leggings on with the torso piece a few times so I could see where they sat together and I basically sewed them together using that same stretchy stitch basically just tacking the torso part to the pants. Tried them on made sure it still worked and you know what it was close enough for this part. Now for those thigh pads so for this I've got a big piece of upholstery foam. I'm gonna cut this right down the middle here just to create two smaller pieces and I just started tracing out in a regular egg shape and carving this one out with scissors. For this part I used an online tutorial 
tale from a drag queen because if anyone knows how to create some false silhouettes, it's gonna be drag queens. Also, don't use your sewing scissors for this, guys. You will destroy them. For my shoulder pads, I had these uh, strips of upholstery foam again, which I was basically just carving out a circular shape out of each of them and cutting out a couple of different circles to sort of layer them up a little bit to sort of create more of that spherical shape. Okay, shoulder pads and thigh pads done. I added one thin strip of that sheet of upholstery foam over the thigh pad, which I hope will try and like smooth out the uh, pad once it's inside the fabric like this, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, time for some bird pants. So for this, I'm gonna use that same method I used to make the leggings. I'm just gonna make them slightly wider so they can fit these padding in there. And it's just gonna cut off at the knee instead. So a little bit shorter. Okay, these turned out perfectly, no notes. I love these so much and they just look very funny to me just how exaggerated they are. And they're sitting nicely over the bodysuit. We are ready to rumble. For the top and shoulders, I am once again, just winging it and seeing how we go. Luckily with stretchy fabric, anything is possible. The poofy sleeves are gonna be completely covered with feathers anyway. So as long as we maintain the general shape using this sort of curvy pattern that I've drawn out, we should be okay. It's looking a little bit lumpy, but it's gonna do the job. So I'm gonna sew these ones onto the top. This project is the closest I'm gonna ever get to shoulder muscles like these. So I'm gonna make the most of it. Okay, it's bird feet time. So for this, I've got some old platforms of mine. I'm gonna be building on top of these. So I've got a nice supportive base for my feet. For the massive talons at the front here, I've just got some foam clay I've molded into a cone. I'm just gonna push this one over. Shout out to Lumen's Workshop for all this foam clay. This stuff is amazing. Now I'm gonna be gluing on strips of upholstery foam upwards onto the shoe here. The main purpose of this is to kind of look like the tendons or muscles under the skin of the bird foot. This extra triangle of foam at the back is gonna create kind of a point where the heel is just to further sell the idea that this is like a foot and not just like a bunch of stuff stuck to its shoe. Meanwhile, my foam clay is now fully dry. So I've got these smaller claws here I made earlier as well for my hands and the bigger claws you saw before. I'm going to run a hobby knife down each of these just to give them a little bit of texture. Hopefully once these are painted up, it'll just provide a bit more dimension. I primed these with a layer of flex bond and then some black acrylic paint. I'm just gluing these ones on with a contact adhesive as it sticks a little bit better with the foam clay. All right, these talons are still looking a little bit awkward once they're on. So we're gonna provide a bit more definition with an extra bit of upholstery foam here that I'm just gonna cut out a strip over the top of each one to kind of encase the claw a little bit. All right, to give my weird bird feet some skin, we're just using that same stretchy fabric that we had for the bodysuit. And we're just going to hot glue them onto the sides and just stretch it over the top of each of those toes. I gotta say, I did not expect the hot glue to work on like the shiny PVC of the boot, but it worked. I wasn't too worried about these being perfectly smooth if it was a little bit wrinkly or lumpy because a lot of these are gonna get covered in scales later on. I got some gloves from We Love Colors and for these, I'm just gonna glue the claws straight on. I am wearing latex gloves underneath to protect my skin from the glue. I'll show you in a moment uh, what that all looks like together. Uh, but first I'm gonna do the actual wings. Now, nobody asked me to make articulated wings. I've just wanted an excuse to do that for so, so long. So I just made my life way harder for no particular reason. Let's get into it and I'll show you roughly how it all came together. It's more of a montage than a tutorial. I think I'm probably gonna end up doing like a whole separate video just on different ways to make articulated wings just because there's so much I just didn't really get the chance to get into and try out. You know, that's a project for another time. So my base is starting with two chipboard placemats that I glued together. I'm gonna be drilling some holes through that and this PVC pipe and attaching them together with some big bolts with some washers and nuts. So the whole frame here is pretty uh, light overall and pretty strong at the same time. You can see I've sawed off the ends of these blow up pipes here. So there's a hole coming out either side. Ignore that string, I will come back to that. But all of these bolts here are keeping everything nice and secure. You can see that that placemat here is pretty thick. So it's not really going anywhere. All of my joints here are attached with some PVC pipe cement and those PVC pipe joints here. You can roughly see the shape that I'm going for is going down and then up, bombing those tips of those wings here. And then this last bit I've left relatively loose as it is going to lever back and forth to form the articulation in the wings here. Now I wanna create a bit of a lever on the top here in order to move this wing. So I've got this sort of wall hook thing that I found at the hardware store. I've drilled a hole straight through my PVC pipe here and I've basically put on a washer as tight as I can to secure that. And you can kind of see where this is gonna be pulled on in order to move that wing in and out. Now it's time for one of my favorite things to use, which is a clear fishing line. I've just tied this one on pretty securely to that hook at the top here. And this is just gonna form a nice strong 
long and thin cable that I'm going to be able to move this wing with. So my plan was to thread the cable back through the pipe all the way to the bottom through the inside, drilling some holes in along the way. That was much easier said than done. Obviously there are a lot of different corners to go around and you can't really get like into the pipe to help guide this string. But with a pair of tweezers, I was able to sort of pull it out of each hole individually to sort of pull it through the distance that we've gone so far and then sort of like poke the string back into that hole to try and get to that next section. I hope that makes sense. Uh, hopefully the footage explains it a little bit better than I do. So now you can kind of see where that string comes out at the bottom of these sort of pipes here, right in the middle of the back. Now I found this in a hardware store years ago. This is a cam cleat. So the idea is that you can have some string or cord and you can pull it down through it. But those little ridges there are going to stop it being able to pull back up. So this is what I'm going to use to hold the string in place so that my wings stay out until I want them to go back down again. So for this, I'm just using my bolt here to mark where I need to drill the holes through the placemat. And then we're going to bolt this bad boy straight into the back piece. I just really want an excuse to use some alliteration there. So I tied some of this cord to my fishing line that's coming out and apparently forgot where the camera was. But you'll see this in action soon enough. Instead of making a harness, I bought an existing backpack from an op shop and cut off the back panel, including the straps. This backpack had some fairly dense padding between me and where the wood piece is going to sit, so it should work out pretty well. I'm going to get some bolts through in several points to hold this one in place, and they're just a heck of a lot of glue as well. So I did drill these holes in advance and poke some holes into the actual fabric of the backpack itself before I stuck the bolts in. These bolts have also got a pretty flat top so that they're not really going to be felt against my back. It should still be pretty comfy and smooth. So despite my resting bitch face here, trying this all on together and seeing how far I've come was really the first moment where I thought, hey, maybe I can actually do this and it's actually going to look good. It was definitely a bit of a triumphant moment for me, despite being sick and moving house, to know that this might actually work out really well. The general shape map down, it was time to start on the details. So for all of the scales, I am using this stuff here. This is EVA foam. It is a cosplayer's best friend. It's very versatile. You can cut it, shape it, curl it, uh, texture it any which way. Now my local place that I usually get this from is Lumen's Workshop. They are an Australian based supplier and they have a lot of different types. Last time I was there to get some foam for this, they actually gifted me a large portion of the foam that I use in this project. So huge shout out to Lumen's Workshop. One thing they do stock that I really like is they have a hard light EVA foam. So as the name implies, it's really quite stiff so it does hold its shape incredibly well but it is still really light so it's not very dense. It's going to hold its shape without giving you heaps of weight. So for something like my feathers and my scales, that is perfect. What I got for this one is the one millimeter and two millimeter foam specifically for the scales so that I had a couple of different depths for when I wanted them to have a bit of texture like on the claws of the feet but stay relatively flat on like the arms and the stomach of Lilith. Now for the scales I did start drawing them out like this but in the end I got so practiced at this I ended up just cutting them out freehand from the foam. I did do a range of different shapes a lot of the time were sort of like weird oblongs or ovals or just triangles with softened edges but I did want to make sure I did a lot of different sizes. Now these little tiny scales will blow away if you try and blast them with the heat gun so I blue tacked all of them down to a piece of paper to hold them in place just trying to tessellate them together a little bit fit as many onto one piece as I can that way I can hit them all at once with a heat gun and that is going to allow me to both heat seal them and curl up the scales slightly so there's a bit of depth to them because of the way the foam curls I had to flip every single one of these around to prime and paint them for priming I added in a couple of light layers of white plaster dip onto the foam I followed that up with a couple of layers of a green gray spray paint. I kept this super light and thin so it kind of created a speckled texture on some of them so they weren't all exactly the same. So to attach some of these larger scales to my boots, I'm wearing a respirator for this because I am using contact adhesive. I figured hot glue might be a little bit messy for this one just because they're really small parts and you can see all of the gaps in between the scales. So now I have pictures of bird feet in my Google search history so I can look up some reference images for placing these scales. You can see I've tried to use a lot of those really small ones in between some of the large ones to even out that space. Now that the feet were covered it was time to start working my way up my legs. So for this part of course I am just putting the glue just where it hits the fabric on the boot part so it's going to overlap with the leg but I'll still be able to take the boots on and off easily. Going further up the leg I started to use more of the flatter scales so the ones made of the one millimeter foam just because they sit a little bit flatter against my leg and they'll hopefully be able to move around a little bit better with my body. Now the contact adhesive I'm using here is primarily designed for leather so I find it works 
looks better than most on fabrics. I'm also wearing tights under this to protect my skin from any glue that seeps through. So with the bird legs coming together, it's time to move on to the belly. These larger scales in the middle kind of look like abs to me and as someone who's always had a rounder belly and not much in the way of hips, I just found it really amusing how much this sort of changes my body shape just with those optical illusions. Well, after building these ones up, the texture is looking fantastic. We're gonna leave it here and move on to the feathers. Planning on trying any of this stuff for yourself. There is one bit of advice that I can give you to take away. Try and get access to a laser cutter because cutting out every single one of those feathers by hand and dremeling the edges and cutting the notches in, it will save you literally several days worth of work if you can find a way to do it in bulk. I won't show you cutting out all the feathers, otherwise would be here all day. This is just one sheet here. These ones, as you can see, are a little bit wider with a pointy end. I made a couple of different shapes of feathers so we can fill out different areas. So you can see I created a couple of different shapes and sizes, even just from this one piece here. The wings mostly had these more rounded feathers, but I did have a couple of feathers that I made specially for the wings, just because they're going to be so long. I had these skewers through the center and they were double-sided. So for these, I've got some wooden skewers about 40 centimeters long, which was not quite long enough. So I ended up like gluing a couple of bits together and just reinforcing it with a bit of electrical tape here. For these really long wingtip feathers, I basically just covered two pieces, like long strips of EVA foam in the contact adhesive. Just reiterating here, don't forget a respirator or some sort of protection for your breathing and a ventilated space. So long skewer right down the center here before I smush these two pieces together. I'm gonna run my hands down the center in this pinching motion to kind of define that spine a little bit and make sure it's fully glued in as close as possible. I'm gonna cut this to the shape that I want for the final feather. I'm just using scissors instead of a hobby knife. It doesn't matter if it's super neat for this one as I am gonna dremel the edges later to thin them out. Between the wooden spine down the center and the hard light foam, this is keeping its shape really well. And now I just had to make a bunch more of them. Okay, so every single feather that I'm doing is going to get a dremel run along the edge of it to sort of thin out the edges a tiny bit, give it a bit of texture. It does help them look a little bit less blocky as well. I have no idea what the technical term is for this particular attachment for the Dremel. I just call it like the sand circle. And yes, I had to do every single feather that I cut out. Uh, there was a lot of them. I believe it's strongly recommended to still wear a respirator when you're sanding EVA foam. And now I can see why. I do not want to be breathing in this black dust, but it does look kind of cool. The cleanup was less fun, especially on a white table. Okay, to make these feathers look a little bit more feathery, essentially every single one of them is going to get these little notches cut out of them. This is kind of suggests that texture that feathers have where you have all those little sections that come out from the spine. You can do just a one or two of them per feather. On some of these longer wing feathers though, I was doing, I think, uh, like seven or eight notches on each one. For just these larger wing feathers, I blasted them with a heat gun to make sure that the foam was a little bit more soft. And I just ran this little wood burning tool down them to score them. The wood burning tool, by the way, was not on. I just wanted to use that sharp edge there just to give everything a bit more texture. So once again, every single feather needed the edges dremeling, cutting the notches out of them, and then heat sealing them ready for priming. So you know what? I was really sick of looking at feathers after a few days. Oh, I did figure out a good method for these longer feathers that don't have the skewer down them just to make them a bit more sturdy. So I heated them up so they're a bit more soft and malleable. And I essentially like pinched a groove down the middle of them. So they kind of mimic that same look for the skewers and it does make them a little bit more sturdy. They don't flop around quite so much. Okay, to prime all of these feathers, I am using black plaster dip and I'm doing a very light coat about three times over with this one, making sure you let it dry fully in between. I would have loved to have used FlexBond as these. It is my preferred way to do things, but since you have to hand paint FlexBond, trying to paint all of these feathers individually would have been a nightmare. Because I've used black foam and black plaster dip here, it does mean that all of these feathers are already the color that I need, which probably saved me days worth of work trying to paint them all. With all of my feathers now prepared, I'm going to lay these ones out against the wing frame so I can kind of see where they're all going to roughly sit, focusing on just the longer feathers for now, and I'm going to have to cut this top rod a little bit shorter just about here and then the rest of this space here is where this top wing feather is going to sit. For the rest of the feathers I'm following the skewer back to where it sits against the pipe and just making a couple little notches here that's going to get a hole drilled straight through the pipe on either side which I'll thread some string through which will be attached to each feather individually. Honestly my Dremel sat in my drawer for like three or four years barely being used so I'm really glad I got to get it out for this project and sort of rediscover how useful they are especially 
especially for someone who's a little bit intimidated by a lot of the power tools. We're going to hot glue this feather in place. Now hot glue against the PVC and foam won't be super strong, but it's just going to hold it in place until I get some string around it. And for this, I literally just used some really nice jute twine that I had. It's a nice grippy rough twine, so it does mean it grips into the hot glue really, really easily for me to wrap it around. And that's going to be super, super sturdy. I'm going to tie and wrap this same twine around each of these feathers here. It's going to provide like a bit of a point where I can tie it onto the wing frame and allow that feather to still move around. For the wing feathers that didn't have the skewers, I punched a hole in the top of the foam and then used that to thread it through instead, reinforcing it with a fair bit of hot glue just to make sure that foam's not going to rip. So it's looking pretty promising, but we have no guarantee at this stage if this was going to work. So my plan from here was essentially to string each of the feathers to the one above and below to kind of daisy chain them together, I guess. Hopefully that means that as the wings come up and down, the feathers will move with them and sort of like spread out and compress back down as they need to. For this part, I use some fine smooth cotton string so it's easy for it to slide against the feathers. I really wish I'd used a black string. For some reason that thought did not occur to me. So I'm essentially like tying around the spine of each of those feathers as I go. In a lot of cases here, I had to cut off the top of the feather or cut an extra notch into the feather where that string is going to sit. Between tying each feather, I actually was opening and closing these wings quite a lot just to make sure everything was still moving smoothly against each other and tweak things as I needed to. There is a heck of a lot of tweaking I did not show in this video, but it was totally worth it. The second layer of feathers would need to move along with the first layer of feathers, so I did attach them individually to each skewer. I had to be very careful about how I attached these to make sure it didn't like get in the way of those wings coming up and down. So once again, I was opening and closing these wings between every single feather to make sure that nothing was getting in the way or interrupted. Luckily, the third row of feathers was high enough up, we could just put it straight onto the PVC pipe. I just had to make sure it didn't get in the way of any of the moving feathers. Now, I wanted to have some feathers that moved at the back of the wings as well, but of course they had to sit far enough away from the main feathers that they don't interrupt the movement. So I had these extra little skewers that I drilled in to kind of sit the feathers on. So they sort of float away from the main part of the wings, but still allow plenty of movement. Before the last few feathers, I painted up the straps of the backpack with some black fabric paint. I did the same to the back panel that had the wooden placemat showing and some of the white PVC pipe that may still peek through between the feathers. And with that, one of the longest parts of this whole costume is finally done. Well, I was looking so seedy yesterday by comparison, but I'm having like a really good hair and face day today, so I'm gonna make the most of it. Anyway, this is a fascinator base. I don't know if there's a technical term for it, that's what I call them. It's like got these clips on the bottom of it here, and this one's like a teardrop shape. This is gonna sit here on my forehead, and that is gonna be how I make the base of my head case. I can do the rest of this like point that she's got with makeup and then essentially the rest of the hood and the crown and everything like that can sit on top of that. So yeah, let's see how it goes. Yet again, we are winging it with this part. I am just going to freehand sketch out the shape of that crown. We're going to be cutting it out of this super thick EVA foam. I think this is about a centimeter thick. Just remember to use a cutting mat or some sort of protection. Don't cut out straight onto your table like I did. Breaking out my trusty Dremel yet again to smooth out some of these sides and just make the shape a little bit less blocky. For the markings on the crown, I wanted to interpret that as like engraving into the stone that's been inlaid with gold. So I'm freehand sketching on all of these little patterns and then I'm going to come back in with my Dremel and start just engraving out those sections. I'm not sure quite what the name of this attachment is for the Dremel, but it worked pretty well. I ended up changing to a slightly bigger one, just going back over it to make those engraving patterns a little bit thicker. I blasted these pieces with the heat gun for a little bit. It heat sealed the foam and allowed me to kind of like curve it a tiny bit just to give it a bit more shape than just a flat piece. Now these beautiful little crown pieces are off to get some layers of plaster dip and a layer of grey spray paint. For the headpiece, I'm going to start with this fascinator base that I've glued some fabric to to form the hood. I've got a piece of EVA foam here that I'm going to curl around into the shape of this fascinator and this point here is going to form a point coming onto my forehead. So to get this curving slightly enough that it'll be flush with my forehead, I'm going to blast this with the heat gun one more time. And the other thing nearby that I really had that was going to form the exact curve I wanted was an old teapot that I used just as decoration. So I'm just going to like hold it against that to try and form that curve. Once I was happy with this curve, I glued that straight down to the fascinator base and started just carving in a couple little feather markings with a hobby knife. Another once over with the heat gun just opened up those cuts a little bit further. I cut some really tiny feathers here that I'm going to start layering up behind those carved feathers I did. The aim here is to form kind of a gradient between the smooth part at the front, smaller feathers, and then into the larger feathers that are going to form the rest of the headpiece. This is a good start, but those sides 
them looking a little bit flat, we're gonna need something to fill them out a little bit. For that, I went back to my upholstery foam sheets. I cut out this sort of teardrop shape with a notch so it would seal up with a bit of a curve to it. So you can kind of get the feeling it's gonna give it a little bit more defined shape once it's in. I added in some slightly longer fabric, but I was happy with how the shape was coming along. Holding up these crown pieces against the headpiece, you can kind of get a feel how everything's gonna sit. Next was just slowly building up those feathers from the smaller ones right at the top and slowly transitioning into the larger ones towards the base of the headpiece. I did try this with hot glue, but just didn't seem to stick that well between the EVA foam and the fabric. So I went back to using contact adhesive. To make sure I could still move my head and everything stayed really flexible, I've only glued these feathers onto the fabric base itself, not to each other. That way everything stays nice and floppy. You guys will have to forgive me for not showing you how I glued these crown pieces on, but I basically just put some contact adhesive on and slapped them onto the headpiece. So for the base layer of the patterns, I used a white acrylic. I think I really should have done black. Apparently black works better underneath metallics, but the end result here was great, so I'm not too worried. I used a very thick fabric paint for the gold here. That way it dried a little bit raised, but still left some of that texture underneath. And a thick outline in black because I just really wanted this design to pop. And with that, another piece of the cosplay puzzle is done. Um. I actually have nothing to add to this section. Uh, I think I just wanted to keep the formula of doing a little face update at the start of each section. To fill out all of these body feathers, there wasn't really any special technique. It was just a case of gluing them one feather at a time for hours and hours and days on days. I started out with the shoulders layering from the bottom to the top. I was looking mostly at getting the smaller ones towards the bottom, the larger ones sitting on the top of the shoulders there. I filled out a couple of extra feathers covering these straps a little bit. This way, when I'm wearing the harness over the top, it sort of blends in pretty well with the rest of the top. I still needed this top to be able to stretch and flex with me, so I'm gluing these feathers only to the fabric itself and not to the other feathers around it. That way they could still kind of move against each other and flex with me. My bird pants were exactly the same technique except that I went from the top and worked my way down my legs. Lilith in her design has got all of these little flecks of gold throughout her feathers and I was just going to use like plain acrylic gold paint for that. But when I was shopping at Lumen's workshop for the foam, they had this stuff here which is gold rub and buff. Now I haven't used rub and buff before but it has this like great waxy texture and it goes a really really long way you can use just your hands to rub it in. So on most of my foam feathers, I was just kind of like putting a tiny little daub on the edges and you can kind of rub it in this way. You can push it like this to create some streaks. It's a very easy way to create that texture really fast. A lot of people use it on more complex designs because it kind of saves them having to do like a lot of shading and things like that. But like a tiny bit of paint can go a really long way. So this stuff was fantastic. And like the color and finish on that, even without trying, is fantastic. Honestly, at this point, I think this was like the most fun I had out of all of the elements of this cosplay. I just really enjoyed painting this up and I think those gold flecks really give it a lot more dimension than it would otherwise have. I just had to resist temptation not to cover like every single feather with it and overdo it. So I kind of put it on like every fourth or third feather. From what we've seen so far, Lilith seems to have a black belly apart from the very front. So I'm going to be painting in the sides and the back of this bodysuit here. This is a fabric paint I've used before. So I do know that it soaks in quite nicely nicely, it doesn't ruin the stretch and it flexes really well, so it shouldn't really ruin the skin tight, figure hugging elements of the bodysuit. I added in a more speckly texture while I was wearing it just to kind of soften those edges a little bit. And finally, I added in some shading, just using some like black eyeshadow on my gloves here, just to make my fingers look a little bit more gnarly and less like, well, gloves. I added in the same shading around the toes on the feet as well. And of course, this is not going to be complete without some awesome makeup and contact lenses. And before I knew it, this whole project was finished. After a month and a half of non-stop working on this while being sick and while moving house as well, I was finally done and I was so happy and triumphant with how this turned out. I did a photo shoot with Keyframes Photography, one of my favorite local photographers here. Considering the sheer size of this cosplay, I'm actually really happy with how well it moves and how comfortable it is. And look, let's be realistic, I'm probably not going to be wearing this for more than three or four hours at a time without getting really sore, but for the size it is, I think I'm really impressed with how I did. PAX is right around the corner here in Australia, so I'm hoping I can wear it there and show it off. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, despite the mad chaos of this project coming together. Obviously, a massive thank you to League of Geeks 
for sponsoring this project. If you guys haven't already, please go wishlist Solim Inferno on Steam. I am so excited for this game. A massive thank you as well to uh, Lumen's Workshop for supplying a fair bit of the foam and foam clay for this project. And a special thank you to all of my people that support me on Patreon. Without you guys, I literally could not do the things that I do. I wanted to thank especially Artemis, Harry, Dakota, Residual Images, Tamara, and Yuri. You guys are my ultimate supporters and thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you also to my Patreon supporters on the Junipers Friends tier. Their names are appearing on screen now. If you want to join my Patreon as well, I post a lot of previews, some exclusive tutorials, and a couple of other bits and pieces. I will put the link to that in the description below. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!